straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saints. Let every nation shout of your faith. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, there'll be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, even so come, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good to be gathered again in church. Good to have the musicians with us. Thank you. Good to have, too, people who continue to join us on live stream. We come as that extended community uh, to prepare for the coming of the Lord. On this second Sunday of Advent, St. John the Baptist steps, as it were, into the picture, into the Gospel. 
and invites us to take up that call that we will hear first in the Isaiah reading to prepare the way of the Lord. Each time we come to celebrate Mass, we recognize that we are ill-prepared to meet the Lord and therefore we pause and ask for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. This Mass is being offered for the intention of Mary Duddy. So let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us submittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Let every cliff become a plain and the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mankind shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger to Jerusalem. Shout without fear. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arms subduing all things to him. The prize of his victory is with him. His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, holding them against his breast, and leading to their rest the mother ewes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and keep us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace, peace for his people. His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Mercy and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and give us your saving help. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. 
Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. There is one thing, my friends, that you must never forget, that with the Lord a day can mean a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not being slow to carry out his promises, as anybody else might be called slow, but he is being patient with you all, wanting nobody to be lost and everybody to be brought to change his ways. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then with a roar the sky will vanish, the elements will catch fire and fall apart, the earth and all that it contains will be burnt up. Since everything is coming to an end like this, you should be living holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heaven and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain, so that he will find you at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. And all mankind shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look, I'm going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord and make his paths straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem made their way to him, and as they were baptised by him in the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. John wore a garment of camel skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. I was preparing my homily on Friday. Uh, I had a thought, uh, not an original thought, I have to say. It struck me, it always seems to happen this time of year, uh, that we hear uh, this gospel account, a strange character in the wilderness, eating locusts, attracting great crowds, just as we come to the end of the television series, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. 
This is actually, in a sense, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, in the sense that they're obviously fascinated by the, the, the way in which John the Baptist is eating and dressing and behaving. But of course, they come to him for a very different reason. It's not that that fascinates them. It's actually what he is saying. He's a key figure in the history of salvation and indeed of Advent, that we should be reflecting on his life and his words 2,000 years plus after he spoke them, when I suspect we can't remember who the celebrities were in last year's Get Me Out of Here, brings with it its own message. They come because uh, he speaks with this incredible power and it's attractive. Jerusalem, all of Judea, the whole of the Jordan district make their way to him. We know that people have been looking for a prophet, for someone who would herald the coming of the Messiah. And in truth, even though people may not be aware of it, I think that search continues still. And the people of that day had their own priests, they had their own prophets, they had others who they were forsaking. They were speaking the words, but I suspect the crowds couldn't see it in their eye. A priest friend of mine said, could you imagine how unnerving that would be if the sacristan, in the days when we had sacristans, uh, came into the sacristy and said, Father, you'll find the congregation is leaving. They've heard that someone at the top of Guildford High Street is speaking with more passion and more zeal, with more, so they're going off there to hear what they are saying. The modern equivalent, I guess, might be the live stream, that people find themselves tuning in uh, to different churches, different places, uh, to try and find uh, that passion, that enthusiasm, that uh, integrity uh, of a homily. I promise you, you'll go a long way before you find a technical team who can provide quite what we have here. It's the conviction in John the Baptist's eyes, uh, the, the way in which he speaks, People can tell when they are being told the truth. And so they follow. They're baptized and they go off and they tell others and they are baptized and the numbers are increasing. And it becomes clear that John the Baptist is not just a prophet, but the prophet. Not just a messenger for the people of his time, but a messenger for the people of our time too. He is our guide on this Advent journey. And I think he gives us an incredibly important clue about these first weeks of Advent. It's easy to slip into that way of thinking that this is all about the preparation for the celebration of the birth of Christ. But the liturgy in this first part of Advent, as you probably know, looks towards that second coming. John the Baptist is a contemporary of Christ. He is not inviting people to celebrate the birth which has happened, but rather to invite them to look for the one who is coming. And we who've been baptized are called in our turn to prepare the way of the Lord and to invite those around us. Of course, this call to evangelize is not new. It's a constant theme in the life of the church and of our community here. But we have an incredible window during these weeks of Advent. Every shop has the words Christ's Mass displayed in it. Except those unfortunately abbreviate it to X. But leaving that aside, the TV, the radio, the media, the newspapers, all sorts of opportunities are there as they all speak about Christ's Mass. This is an open door for us to add a little word to the Christmas card, to adapt our email signatures, to ask our friends and family about their plans for coming to church, for making prayer and faith part of their celebration of this season. And if this is the right season, then it seems to me particularly that this is the right day. By coincidence, this year, the second Sunday of Advent has displaced, so we don't get to celebrate it, the feast of St. Nicholas, 
the Bishop of Mara. You may know that he secretly delivered gifts to those who were in his care, who were poor or in need. And you see pictures of him uh, in those robes as a bishop with the mitre on his head, clutching the gifts that he will distribute. And you can see where Father Christmas got his uh, inspiration. Indeed, Apparently in America, I'd love to see this, I might Google it later. Um, apparently in America, they are running an advert at the moment which shows Father Christmas in his sleigh on his journey and he pauses and parks up at the nativity and spends a moment on one knee, making sure that for him too, that presence of Christ is key. Everything about this season is founded in and leads to Christ, if only we open our eyes and ears, if only we can encourage others to recognize it uh, in this time. If people see in our eyes, if they hear in our voices that same conviction of John the Baptist, they can recognize that we know that this is true, then together with them, we can truly fulfill that prophecy of Isaiah. We can join John the Baptist in his ministry. Together we can prepare the way of the Lord. And so we stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayer, our petition, is now part of evening prayer, which will be celebrated this evening at seven. If you have any intercessions you would like to send in, do please send them to Father Thomas at cpg.church. I know at this very moment he's preparing the list. And meanwhile, we sit and turn to the altar and thank God for his gift. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. With the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. I meant to keep the times and notices to a minimum. 
not a skill I've managed to develop yet, just to highlight uh, that next week begins the 10% uh, charity appeal uh, across our parish. Details of that are on the website and in the newsletter, uh, as indeed the details of so much more. Do please uh, either check on the website or if you want to print a copy of the email of the uh, newsletter, it's one available on the way out. If you know of anyone who can't receive the email, do please let the office know and we'll post them a newsletter. So I think everything that needs to be said is there. Except, I might just take a moment to, to thank the wardrobe department who've made sure that we now have purple masks for Advent. So I think I can't, can't wait to see what will happen at Christmas. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. See you.